Sand beneath my toes, I hear the Antonov planes overhead in the skies of Erthashir. They always came in pairs, sealing the sound from our throats, the time from our lives. I used to be afraid of fireworks because of the noise, how it echoed gunshots I heard in Yemen, Sudan, how the light mimicked what we knew of bomb blasts. Fearing the night isn't nearly as terrifying as fearing the day. Do you know what it's like when your oppressors don't have to hide behind the cover of darkness? They only hid behind the notion that no one would come for us, that no one would care. This is the story of how everyone changed to care and how people like us take back the light and use it to illuminate the books we read and write. Nzoguha Tanganyika. I'll give you Lake Tanganyika. I'll give you the word. My head is buzzing, trying to remember. What is my favorite word in Kirundi? Kirundi is my mother tongue, a language I spoke before I saw the sun. My mother spoke it to me while I was in her womb, praying, sharing secrets, and telling me about the word I was yet to see. They say home is where your heart is. But my heart is shattered. Is it where my family is? Or is it with my childhood friends in our old street? Is my heart in a land I once was born in? In a house I left when everything went wrong? I was born and raised in a humble family in our small village in South Sudan some years back. In fact, I'm among a few peoples in the world who don't know the exact date of birth. This was the time Southern Sudan was fighting to get out of Sudan to be a country of its own. This fight affected our village so much. Our animals were raided and houses got burned down. The only part I remember vividly was the very mornings our village got attacked. We ran scattering into different directions where I later found myself in the company of some of our neighbors who were also running. This journey later got us into Kakuma Camp, Kenya. And since then, I never felt at home again because I was separated from my parents and I don't know where they ran to. I was born at the time of fighting and the fighting continues. I can hear gunshots. My family was forced to leave their home even before I was born. I am part of this generation who born in conflict. So many years pass, but it is still going. Ikirundi, the language spoken in one of the tiniest landlocked East African nations called Burundi. Agahugu Gatoi Kamatanubuki, a small country and cherished place of milk and honey. And when you promise the most precious thing to a loved one, you say, Nzogu Hatanganyika. I will give you the lake, the most valuable treasure that you can only understand when you are from the heart of Africa. I was born in a village girls who are not allowed to go to school. Luckily, my parents decided to go to the city where can I study. My father committed to education. For me, study language is not only for communicate, but it is also a way for working peace. I feel at my home when I advocate in peace and human rights. I learned the importance of this type of work. Not long ago, we were taking my brother wife to the hospital as she was about giving birth. Her health was very dangerous. It will take an hour by a road to go to the near city and two days by a camel. While we were traveling, we discovered an organization that specialized in healthcare. And the people from that group helped us. My brother wife delivered her baby safely. Since then I realized how much people in rural areas suffering from lack of education, health care and even water. I decided to work with humanitarian organizations to protect the right of everyone. It is now 15 years since you left us. In those 15 years, many things have happened. Your girl has grown up. I'm now the big sister you were always asking me to take care of your young son. 
Your girl is now a mother, no longer a young girl. I remember the sweet morning with you when you prepared breakfast. Or I sometimes I remember I was refusing to eat because you were hiding the daffnuts from me. I remember the sweet moments. We walked eight kilometers in the forest to pick the roses so we could keep the smell inside our home. Our lovely home smelled wonderful. I still remember the sweet sounds of the radio playing from the right corner of our sitting room. I remember the holidays, like Easter and Christmas and Sundays. Wow, those memories are like stretch marks on my heart. I was born and brought up in a small neighborhood, but in a big family in Kabul. The place is still special to me. It was a clay house made by my grandfather and renewed by my father. I remember in the morning when I used to get ready for school, my father was shaking the tree and the yard was full of amrud and my grandmother was collecting the fruits. The sense of belongingness and home that I found there I am unable to find in any other place. I spent there the sweetest moments of my childhood. I still remember that day back in Aleppo in 2012. The sharp sound of the helicopter's bullets. My mom telling me to take only the things I needed for two days. We'll go to our farm over the weekend and come back, she said. But mom, it took us a decade to come back, to see our house again. It doesn't feel like home anymore. It's a shell with air inside. Air that is not coming out from its inhabitants' breath but from a cold and dead place. The time I enjoyed in my country will never be felt again. I don't think I will ever feel at home in a foreign country where I got married to my husband who came from a different country. I have never seen his country and his family, while he has never seen mine as well. Our children have no idea who are their grandparents, aunties, uncles, and cousins. Being away from home makes me feel a stranger, as everything became strange to me. When I left my country at 16 as a foreign exchange student, I never imagined that I would be away from home for that long. My country, the Soviet Union, ceased to exist, and with it, my nationality. These days, when our internet connection is good, I can see the years etched on my mother's face as she asks me again, when will you come home? But where is home when you're stateless? I have no passport with which to board an airplane, no embassy to go to, no nation to return to or to call my own. So we cry and we laugh. She shows me the last of the tall trees still shading the yard, the evening light on the old copper roofs visible from the windows of her ancient fifth floor apartment. I show her the mountains still covered in snow, and she marvels at the bright northwestern morning. There is no day that passes without missing you. When you are still with us, you always told me that whatever happens, you don't want to see me crying. You told me that I have to be a strong and to move on to take life strong because I am unique. And that is how I feel in my life. I am unique. Mom, at Chakatu Refugee Settlement, where we built the second home, it was great experience with my brother. We built a home, not only for us, but a home for many. Some days I wish I could go back in life, not to change anything, but to live a few moments twice. One of the sweetest memories of my childhood and my homeland is from my favorite place in my homeland. Maybe for every kid, their favorite place and the place they can never forget is where they have grown up. Home is a very triggering word for me. As someone who was born a refugee, you get told or you feel like you do not belong. 
To live in a host country that's so openly xenophobic makes it hard to claim the host nation you were born in as home. The last time I felt home was only when I enjoyed life with my family, friends, and the classmates. I wish I can rewind my life to be at home again. Well, to me, home is a feeling. A feeling of acceptance and welcome, with love, dignity, and respect. Home to me is about roots and freedom, both. I find it in my mother's voice, in the eyes of my loved ones. Sometimes I find it in art and music, or giving back to the community in an effort to make a difference. And as a human rights activist, I often feel at home while working towards the goal of ending statelessness in the world. It's been almost 30 years since I last held my mother's hand. Most of my childhood was spent in a race against time that was stolen from us. In a lot of ways, that race has never ended. The moments I take to catch my breath bring the fear of backwards momentum crashing down on me, as if taking a break suddenly gives the world permission to course correct towards violence, teetering on the edge Every moment, we are not actively choosing good. We're choosing something else. I'm reminded now of a meeting with my uncle in Paris in January. He told me, I know you're far away now, and your brothers and the rest of our family, but I like to think of us as constellations. I lay there, staring at my ceiling at night in my new home, and envision the beacons of you all across the world connected no matter what. His words strengthen me now as we create a future where the only thing that lights up the sky is us. So what is home to me? You know that cliche term, home is where the heart is? Yes, that one. I know it's cliche, but when you're a refugee, it really applies to you. Home is not as simple as a geographical location. It is a feeling. So what feels like home to me? I could be anywhere in the world and I've always feel at home where my loved ones are. I just joined school in Kakuma refugee camp here and I study and complete my high school. After my high school, I didn't obtain a direct scholarship to university, but I had a dream and my dream is to become a journalist. I later got into media trainings, which I did for two years. This made me completely feel at home again and I felt like my dream to become a journalist was becoming a reality. My heart stopped being all in one place. It is now in different homes with people, people that I might not see anymore and homes that might have disappeared, leaving my heart shattered over and over. But at least now I feel home in my mom's embrace every weekend. I taste home in her food. I feel home in my friend's laughter, collecting the pieces of my shattered heart. Let us together fight, let us together have peace in all the countries, and let us together know what is the value of living together. Please don't take the right of another, and when we unite, everything will be better, and nothing will be worse. In the next five minutes, I will speak my language to her. Time has felt like eternity. The weight was unbearable, but now I know she has landed from Bujumbura. My mother, the one who told me my language has arrived at Melbourne airport. My heart feels like it's about to stop I have practiced this moment many times in my heart. Ndagukumbu, yeah. I miss you so, so, so much. This feels good. I have waited for so long. So that was the word. The word that came. The only one I needed. Mama, 
Words do not matter anymore because when I'm at home, I do not need to talk.